Quick question, how is it that these rocks are able to stay upright without toppling over? The answer has to do with a concept called the center of mass. A physical object will take up some volume within the physical space with the mass of the object distributed over that space. If you took that object and shrunk it down to a single point, where would that point be located? That point is what we call the center of mass. It's a point in the body or system of bodies that represents the average weight distribution of all of the masses in that body. Or it's a point in which the mass will be considered as concentrated for the purpose of visualizing its motion. The important consequence of center of mass is that this point is where forces, such as the force of gravity, can be applied to cause that mass to move in a linear motion without rotating it, and it is the reason why irregular shaped objects can stand upright without toppling over. Let's look at this concept in more detail. Let's first look at where the center of mass is within a body. Center of mass is defined as the average weighted position of all of the masses of an object or system of objects. Let's take an example of a round soccer ball in two-dimensional space. If we shrunk that ball down to a single point by compressing the ball evenly from all sides, where would all of the mass of the ball be concentrated? Would the mass be concentrated point A at its center, point B at the bottom of the ball, or point C on the left side of the ball? In this example, the center of mass would be at point A at its geometric center. The reason is that the ball is symmetrical, and if the ball is homogeneously made up of the same material, and those material are evenly distributed in the ball, then on average, half of the mass of the ball will be in the upper part of the ball, half the mass will be in the lower half, and likewise, half the mass will be on the left side of the ball, and half the mass will be on the right side. So the average position, if you sum up all of the masses and their positions, is at the center at point A. This will be true for all symmetrical objects made from the same homogeneous material. So a soccer ball will have its center of mass at its geometric center. The center of mass is not at the center of the object though, when its mass is not evenly distributed, or when the object is made up of different materials and different densities. Take for example a sledgehammer. It's made up of a head that's made out of metal and a wooden handle. The geometric center of the hammer will be located halfway along the hammer and in the center of the handle as shown here and marked as GC. But because the head is made out of metal, which is a much more dense material within wood, then there is more mass concentrated at the head end of the hammer. So the center of mass will be much closer to the head than its geometric center. In these two examples that we've looked at, the center of mass sits within the body. But there are times when the center of mass is located away or outside of the body. Take for example, this donut shape, which has all of its mass distributed around a center hole. Because of symmetry, with all the masses evenly distributed on the outside, the center of mass of this object is at the geometric center, but not within the mass itself. Likewise, take this L-shaped object where its mass is concentrated at the top and the right side of the object. Thus, the center of mass will be located somewhere on the top right quadrant. So why is center of mass important and how is it used? When we talk about an object located at some position in space, or moving in some direction, we're really talking about the object as if it's an object concentrated at a single point and that point is moving. Take for example a soccer ball located at some location on the ground. The ball is kicked and travels in projectile motion to land some distance away. The path that we visualize is a path taken by the ball's center of mass. The rest of the ball moves in the proximity of this path but the ball may be rotating. So individual masses on the ball will have both linear motion as well as angular motion. The amount of angular motion would depend on whether the force of the kick was directed at the center of mass of the ball or away from the center of mass. Let's look at this in more detail. Consider this rectangular object. Because it's symmetrical, its center of mass will be located at its geometric center as represented by the dot in the diagram. 
If we apply a force on the object at its center of mass, then that force will cause the object to translate linearly in the direction of the applied force. So we will move upwards in this case. But if the force was applied in the same direction, but away from the center of mass, say slightly to the right, then this force will cause the ruler to have two types of motion. First, it will move the ruler upwards, just as in the first case, but it would also cause the ruler to rotate counterclockwise as it's moving upwards. So the ruler will have both linear motion as well as rotational motion. The ruler will rotate about its center of mass as it moves upwards. So when a force is applied away from the center of mass, some of the energy from the force is used to translate the mass and some will be used to rotate the mass. The rotation is caused by torque, which will be discussed in the next video. One consequence of this is if you want to move the object the maximum linear distance with a given force, then you want to minimize any rotation by applying that force at the object's center of mass rather than somewhere else on the object. This is because energy is needed to rotate an object, and if energy is used to rotate the object, then there is less energy available to move it. Conversely, if you want to create rotation at the expense of travel distance, for example, to kick a ball so that it curves, then you apply the kicking force away from the ball's center of mass. Let's look at another situation where center of mass is important, this time a static example. Consider a person standing upright in a field. A person standing with their arms down will have the center of mass just below the navel or the belly button. As the person has mass and is subjected to acceleration due to gravity, then gravity will apply a vertical force on the body which we call weight. On average, that force is concentrated at the center of mass. For this reason, the center of mass is sometimes referred to as the center of gravity when talking about gravitational forces on a body. If the center of gravity passes between the distance that the person spans on the ground, then that person will be stable. But if the person leans over so that the center of gravity now points outside of the person's span on the ground, then the gravitational force will cause the person to rotate and tip over. So this explains why objects like these rocks can stay upright without toppling over even though there is such small contact areas between them and the surface they are on. As long as the center of gravity falls within those contact areas, they will stay balanced. In summary, the center of mass of an object or system of objects is the average weighted position of all of the masses in that object or system of objects. It is the point where the object will move linearly without any rotation if a force acts on that point.